Welcome to Tatum Talk. I'm Annette. Welcome back. And today, diabetic test strips. I've seen plenty of videos online with people saying, all you need to get started is $20. Really? <laughs> That's not facts. It's not. You definitely need more than $20. I'm going to tell you why. Let's bring it down. First of all, I don't know where you think you're getting this from. You can't just walk in the store and buy it. You can, but it doesn't make sense. They sell them in CVS, Walgreens, other pharmacy places. This on the shelf, over the counter, is like $43. So there's no resale value in it. You have to get this from someone who got it for free in order for it to make it, sense, make, it make sense. So that person, probably their insurance company, covered it for them. They got an overabundance of what they need. And to them, this is worthless. They're just sitting around. I've met a woman who told me she threw away 20 boxes because she didn't know what to do with it. So basically, it's nothing to them. They could sell it to you for $10, $20. They wasn't even thinking of getting anything off of it in the first place. So today, I bought two boxes of these and another box of 100 count. But these two boxes, I paid $19 and I can get $39 back for it. Now, how do you get the, how did I acquire this box? The person called me. They called my Google Voice number. How did they see the Google Voice number? I advertised. So you have money that you have to put out an acquisition course. So it could be a Craigslist ad, which is only going to cost you $3. But you need to place that ad like frequently, not just one time like every day, every other day, in different areas of the city, nearby cities, something like that. So $3 is going to accrue depending on how many times you place the ad. And then you need to put up bandit signs. I bought bandit signs. I bought, I didn't buy a lot. I bought 50 to start with. But the 50 signs cost me $133 with shipping and with the stakes to put them standing up in the ground. But I actually paid more than that because then I bought zip ties to get them to stay um, on the poles. So I spent more than that, actually. Probably, let's just say 150 on bandit signs. I spent more also because I don't have a vehicle. So I had to rent a car because where are you going to put these signs up at? Right? You're not just going to put them up in your neighborhood. If you have a car, this is not an added expense for you. But if you don't, then you have to pay someone to drive you, take time out to drive you around to put these signs up. Or maybe you could borrow a car. But if you have to rent a car, that's another that's another added expense. I tried to put the signs up in my neighborhood. I put up maybe five just to test the waters. And they were taken down in about a day. So I... In the course that I took, that's another thing. If you take the course, the course course also, it, it, it depends if they have a payment plan or if you pay the whole thing. The course I took was $9.97, but other people I've seen have other courses for like $300, $400. And so that's another expense, acquisition, right? Acquisition course. He says, go to the lower income neighborhood. So that's when I rented a car and I drove to the other side of town and I put the signs up. The signs stay up longer over there. And so people are still calling me from the one um, the one time that I went out there and put the signs up. I just came from the other side of town today. That's where I got the call from. So you have, let's go over it. Your acquisition costs are gonna be advertising. It's gonna be Craigslist. It's going to be bandit signs and the tools that you need to put the signs up, as well as um, travel costs, we'll call it, in case you need to rent a car. But um, even if you don't rent the car, the only way you could possibly do this is for $20 to start with is if you have a family member or a friend, a friend's parents, a friend's family member, somebody close to you that you don't have to advertise to um, to acquire their test strips. If that person 
is um, some place where you can get to them without having to uh, spend travel for us, then that is an easy way for you to get started. Because all you literally have to do is hand that person $20 and they hand you the test strips and then you can send it in. However, the people that are going to pay you the top dollar are going to be wholesalers. You cannot find those people online Googling them. I tried. You're really going to have to pay for that information because it's in the course. It's in the guy doesn't tell you it in all his many YouTube videos and other people I've listened to them on their videos. They don't tell you that one pertinent piece of information, which is who you selling these strips to. So if you just try to flip them online or eBay or something like that, you're not going to make that much money. You can make a little bit of a profit, but it's not going to be that much. Um, so there's definitely some cost involved and you need to know that going in. So don't just think you're going to just take $20 and flip that into 40 and flip the 40 into 80 and flip, flip the 80 into one six. It's not going to be that easy. You're going to have to spend more money than that. I'm here to tell you I did it. I'm only uh, a little bit past 30 days doing this right now, but, um, my course were, I want to say, I spent 900 no, I spent, yeah, did I? I want to say I spent, well, you know what? I have my operating cost. Um, I did it in another video. I'll link that video below this one. But off the top of my head, I want to say I spent about seven, maybe seven to eight hundred dollars. Seven to eight hundred dollars. And I got back on my first invoice was $1,092. So I only made about $200. Um, yeah, and some change, maybe something like that. But the thing is, my total acquisition cost was about five, five and some change. And I got back over a thousand. So I literally, I literally doubled my money. The rest of that cost was expenses. It was the advertising and it was the rent in the car. And um, also to get to people. Once people call and say, hey, I've got some test strips, then I have to go meet these people. And so then that's another course also. So how am I going to get to these people? Am I going to take an Uber there? I sure not to do that because that's cutting into my profit. I can take the bus and the train to meet them. Or I was renting the car until I had an accident. Somebody hit me and ran. So now my account is suspended with this particular car sharing service. I just signed up to a, a different one. And hopefully by Monday, I'll be driving again so today's friday so by monday i'm hoping to be able to rent another vehicle by the hour i don't really want to rent by the day because i don't need the car for the whole day um so yeah that's my experience i only made um i only saw i made the profit doubled my money but i only saw less than that maybe 200 out of the five and some change because of the expenses that i put out so you're going to have expenses. So just, you know, know that you need a couple of hundred dollars to get started. But other than that, it's good. I like it. You know, only not too time consuming, a couple of hours a day. And um, these people, hopefully, that I've met will call me back again next month. So I won't have to spend as much to acquire new customers. Um, one thing that happened, though, this is a sidebar. One thing that happened was I messed up a deal. Could have been a really big deal, too. This woman said she had 200 boxes of uh, contour, 100 count strips, which I would make $70 a box off of it. I offered her $30 a box. This is the snag, though. She's not in the same state that I'm in. So uh, she would have to ship it to me, which I would have paid the shipping cost. So that's why I put it at 30. I could have offered her 35, but I put it at 30 because I have to pay for shipping. But also, uh, I realized too late that I wasn't speaking to the person directly. Um, this woman got my number from my brother. So she called me up and 
she said, you know, I have 200 boxes of such and such, such and such. I said, ask her the questions that I need to ask to make sure that it's what I, I want to buy. The expiration date has to be good, the brand, the boxes, condition, stuff like that. And she sent me a picture, but this is, this is the thing. She said, hold on, let me ask her. And then she conferred with someone else, got back to me, answered my question. Then she said, I said, oh, can you send me a picture? And she said, oh, hold on, let me have her send me the picture. So then I realized that it wasn't her boxes, that she was talking to someone else. I didn't think much of it at first, but we left off a conversation for her to get back to me the next day, right? Because I wanted her to go through the boxes and make sure all of them were new. She says she just got them, but I don't know who gets 200 boxes at one time. So I'm just like, can you just go through all of them and look at the expiration dates and just let me know. So um, the next day I didn't hear from her. So when I reached out, she said, oh, she decided to go another route. And I was thinking another route. So she didn't like my price. And then I said, well, can you let me speak to her? Because I'm thinking maybe she didn't convey my what I said, you know, right in the conversation, I should speak to the, to the lady myself. So she didn't, she didn't give me the number. She didn't even respond actually. So when I spoke to my brother, I came to find out that this woman was not ever, did not ever intend to give me the lady's number or let me speak to her. She wanted to stay in the middle because she was doing something. I'm not clear on what it was. But more than likely, she was trying to undercut the price or add in something or something so she could make some money off the deal as well. And she probably screwed the deal up because maybe the number that I said wasn't what the woman wanted to hear. Maybe that's not what she heard. You know, maybe she said something else. So therefore, the lady decided to look around. But Next time, I will make sure I'm speaking to the person that is the owner of the box and nobody else is in the middle. Because that would have been easily 3500 that I could have made. So, lesson learned. I won't do that one again. Please like this video. Please share. If you know someone that it can help. And come back and watch me sometime.